Hey Defenders, welcome back. So in the last video, we installed Sysmon for Linux on a Ubuntu server. And that enabled us to configure Sysmon rules very similar to what we've previously done with Windows. And that allowed us to capture specific events such as network connections, file creations, all within real time and output them to our syslog file. However, even though that syslog file is being sent to our Wazoo manager, our Wazoo manager does not know how to parse through these XML fields that Sysmon for Linux outputs to. And that then results in our manager just disregarding the message. So it's not being stored within Elasticsearch, alerts are not being generated, and we're not able to actually view those in Kibana because our Wazoo manager doesn't know how to read them. So our current issue here is our manager does not know how to parse through the logs and that will be done with a decoder. And then after that, our even though our manager will be able to decode the files, the, be able to decode the XML, it won't have rules that will trigger alerts. And again, we need a rule to we need an alert to trigger so that Wazoo writes it to Elasticsearch. Then we can use Gabbana to view those alerts. So we will first need to create a Wazoo decoder. We will need to create Wazoo rules. And then after that, we will be able to view those in Kibana. And that'll look something like this when everything is said and done. So here we see our Sysmon for Linux event starting to come in to Kibana so that we can actually view and look at some of the metadata around our alerts. So stick around and we'll jump into it. And all right, so let's first look at an example of kind of the, the problem that we're currently facing, right? So I'm gonna go into my management, I'm gonna go into rules, I'm gonna select manage rule files, I'm gonna select custom rules, and then here I'm just going to run a test. So if you go into any of your rule files here and select rule set test, we'll be able to paste a a raw log entry into that to see if our manager is able to decode it or not. And this is a really this is really useful for looking to when you're adding new rules and, and decoders and want to test and make sure that they're running correctly. Uh, this is a good little feature to, to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and tail my var log syslog file and I'm just gonna grab one of our latest sysmon for Linux events here. So I'm gonna grab that and then just paste that within here. And if I run a test, we'll see that we have no result found. So our manager wasn't able to even decode this XML that is being passed to it via the agent. So let's go ahead and stand up a decoder. So I'll select management. I will go into decoders. I will select custom decoders. I'll say manage decoders file and then manage decoders. And then we can select add new decoders file here. So here I'll just call this sysmon for linux.xml, make sure you add the .xml extension. And then if I go to the GitHub here, I have already created this uh, so that you guys can just copy and paste it in. So I'll go ahead and select my linux, uh, my linux-sysmon.xml. I'm gonna get the raw of this data and I'll link this in the description below so you guys can navigate to it easily. And I will copy all that and I will paste it here. And let's walk through a little bit of what we're doing. So, so with these decoders, they are super flexible because you can just, because you can use regex patterns to match on specific fields. Um, deep dive into decoders and kind of how it's working under the hood is a video for another day, but I'll kind of briefly walk you guys through kind of what's going on here. So we first are setting up our decoders in terms of a parent and a child. So kind of similar to our Wazoo rules, how we can have parent and child rules. We're doing that similarly with our decoders. So here will be my parent decoder. And all I'm doing here is a simple match on the program name field, and that has to equal to Sysmon. So if we then look at our syslog file where our sysmon for Linux is outputting to, we see our program name here as sysmon. So if yours is something different, you need to change it to reflect that. I don't expect you guys to be different if you are following along, but here is our program name field. So this decoder will trigger 
when it sees the value sysmon within the program name field. And then what we're doing is we're then stepping through each, each event field to specify what we want to grab out and then what we're going to call it. So we've created a decoder here called sysmon-linux-child, and this will only be compared against if the sysmon for Linux parent has triggered. So that would be this guy right up here. So we can assume that if our parent has triggered, saying that the program name is sysmon, that this is a sysmon event, and we want to now run these childs after that. So after a parent is matched, we're then specifying on our regex. And so the first field we're looking to grab is our event ID. So if I look at the raw log, here we see a event ID of 11. And we're using a slash P here because we want regex to escape the uh, less than and greater than signs, right? So we're using a slash P to escape that out. We're then specifying our event ID. And then since this event ID is always a digit, meaning it's a numerical value, so it's a, a one through I think 21 or 22, we have a slash D here in our parentheses stating that it is a digit and then we have a plus sign, meaning that it can be greater than just one, it can be greater than one single digit. So one single digit, for example, being a one, two, three, or four, where a multiple digit would be a 10, right? A one and a zero or an 11, a one and a one. So we're saying a plus flag here to account for that. And then we're gonna say the event ID field ends when you see event ID again. So if we open this guy back up, you see that our event ID is closed. Right, so we're saying you see that our event ID here ends the event ID field corresponding to what we have here, and then what we include in the parentheses is what we want Wazoo to grab and assign a field to. So within our parentheses here, which will be our digit, so in this case that would be an eleven. We want to give that an order, which is what we'll see within Kibana as system dot event id and that'll become a little more clear when we actually have these logs being written to Elasticsearch and we're able to view them within kibana uh, so that'll be a little more clear there and then we're essentially just stepping down through all of the various fields right so then we next have keywords so if we look back at our sysmon event we will see our keywords field here right and its value associated with it and you'll notice that there is a gap right because we have version we have level we have task we have op code uh and we don't necessarily care about collecting those so what's super nice and flexible about how wazoo has destructured has structured their decoders is we can extract any field within these within our log entries that we want right they don't have to follow in order which is really nice so again we're doing something so again, we're doing something very similar, right? We're taking our keywords field, we're matching on our keywords field, and then we're going to take that value. However, this will not be a digit. So we use a period here as just a wildcard, meaning this can match on anything because the data that comes into our keyword field can be a digit or it can be a string character like in this X here, right? So to account for that, we tell our Wazoo manager, hey, the value that's in this field, it could be a digit, it could be an alpha character, right? It could be, we're, we're not sure what it's always going to be every time, so we use our wildcard flag here. And then we do that for all of our other fields here. So you guys can kind of play around with this and better familiarize yourself with it, make some changes, uh, just to kind of get familiar with it. But uh, for you guys as in, if you're following along, all you should have to do is copy and create this decoder file. And we'll go ahead and save this guy. And then we will go ahead and run a restart. And now that that's saved and restarted, let's now create rules to trigger off of this. So I'm gonna go back into management. I'm gonna go into rules. Let's select manage rule files, custom rules. And we're going to add a new rule file. So here I'll just call this sysmon for linux.xml. And if I go back to the GitHub here, I have a Another file that you guys can grab, and I'll link this guy in the description below as well. 
And I will grab this guy and go ahead and paste that in here. So now what we're doing, so now that our decoding should be handled now, we we now need rules to be able to actually trigger alerts off of off of our log entries, off of our syslog entries, right? And to use that, we are taking the event ID field and we're just looking at the numerical value here. So if it's a one, I know it's a that is a sysmon event one, and that is a process creation. If it's event three, I know that that is a network connection. And that again reflects back to sysmon config file, right? So we have event ID one, event ID three, event ID five. And if we look at our fields here, we see of our event IDs coming in. So this one for this example would be an 11. So if we go back to our wazoo rule and scroll down to where we get the event ID is equal to an 11, we know that that is a file creation. And so now our wazoo manager will alert on that because we have that set to a level of three. And then that will be written to Elasticsearch and we'll be able to view it within Kibana. So let's go ahead and save this guy and we'll need to restart our manager here. And then after restarting, let's go ahead and do another rule set test. So I'll just grab, uh, I'll grab this guy here. And let's now make sure that our decoder and our rules are working as expected here. So I have an event ID of 11, so it looks like that has finished. So I'll open my rule set test, paste that in, run a test. And now we can see we're actually getting some output back, right? So here we can see our decoder working in action. So our phase two of how Wazoo handles ingesting logs and parsing and then alerting on them and stuff, they handle them in different phases. So they first pre-decode it, and here you can see our program name come into place, right? Where we have specified sysmon. We then see our completed decoding finish. Again, looking at our sysmon Linux was our parent, right? So we're then stripping out all our decoder is then able to strip out the values of these various fields. So you see our event ID, our keywords that we highlighted on, and then uh, some of the other fields that our decoder is parsing out for us. And then you finally see our rule trigger, right? So now phase three is once the log has been decoded, Wazoo then compares it against its rule sets. And here we can see our rule ID 200,201 trigger because we're looking for an event ID of an 11, right? So that's starting to look good. So now if we actually go into, so I'll go to my sysmon for Linux agent, I'll go to security events here and I'll select my events and we should see our sysmon for Linux, our sysmon events starting to come through. And sure enough, we see these guys here. And let's go ahead and trigger one of these guys. So I'll leave this. Uh, let me just do like a telnet out to Google. So I'll grab for 8.8.8. And in my other window here, let me zoom that in a bit. I'll just run a telnet out to 8.8.8 and 4.4.3. And so that should trigger a network connection within our sysmon event. So if I run that, uh, sure enough, we get our event come through. So we see an event ID three, which correlates to a network event. And then we see our destination IP out to 8.8.8. We see our port, right? We see the actual program that made the connection attempt. So that's pretty cool, right? I use telnet and we see the telnet binary being used here as part of our image. So if I then refresh here, let's scroll down a bit and here we are. So we see our network connection by our telnet binary. And here we see our details. Out to We went out to 8.8.8. .8 .8. We connected via port 443. And then we, knew, we know telnet is the program that did it. Let's run something else. Let's, let's download a iCar file. So if I do our iCar page, I will just copy this address here. And what I'll do is just tail without gripping. So we should see these come in. Uh, I'll CD into my opt. Now I'll just run a wget out to this guy. All right, so we've downloaded an iCar file. Uh, we saw some events pop off. And if we go back into Kibana, 
hit it with a refresh, we should see that whole kind of process uh, happen, right? So, so I refresh that, and now we see our we see our file being created, right? So we see that wget was used to grab this icar.com file. And then if we step up one event here to our network connection, we can then see where I connected to to grab this file. And this is icar's IPv6 address. We connected over 443 and we used wget to, to grab that. So pretty cool, right? And then the process was terminated because wget exited out. So we know that wget finished, it collected the file that it needed to and exited out. So we then get our process termination. So pretty cool. So we're able to now actually view our Sysmon for Linux alerts within Kibana without having to actually, you know, get on the server itself and try to run sophisticated greps to look through the various log files and stuff like that, right? So which is the problem that Wazoo is looking to solve? So I think that wraps it up for today's video. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.